right, shalom, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Guitar Rabbi YouTube channel. My name is Christopher Fredrickson, a.k.a. the Guitar Rabbi, a.k.a. Rabbi Aved Bena. No, actually, this is Rick Beato. And um, I'm upset because one of my videos got taken down because of a copyright strike. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Today, we're going to be looking at a guitar that I'm not going to play outside of the intro that we did earlier. And uh, the reason for that, let me turn this off there. The reason why we're not going to play it anymore is because of the fact that, first of all, brand new strings on this thing, and it's a Floyd Rose. <laughs> so you know what that means. You know what that means. It means it's going to be a week until this thing is... Um, is uh, in total shape. Now, just so you know, there are a couple of things that have been changed on this guitar. Uh, let me go and show you some of them, as a matter of fact. And we'll talk about what this guitar actually is, because nobody has talked about this guitar on YouTube. All right? I ended up putting in a, a new Floyd Rose in there. The original idea is, notice that, you know, we have the fine tuners down here and all that stuff. Well... The original Floyd Rose, which actually it's weird because it says um, it says it's licensed by Floyd Rose, so it's not a real Floyd Rose, okay? And it didn't have the fine tuners and all that stuff. Um, this they were taken off of here um, by um, either the previous owner or the owner before it, and all that stuff. And I understand how much of a pain. A Floyd Rose can be uh, a Floyd Rose. You know, I have a love-hate relationship with Floyd Rose. I love a Floyd Rose whenever it's all in tune and set up and all that stuff. It's just getting it to that point that is hard. <laughs> it is getting it to that point that is very, very frustrating. So I ended up putting a new Floyd Rose on here. And, of course, with that, I had to go and take care of the tension on the back and all that stuff. This took me about two days. And then, um, of course, um, I had to go and get the pieces for the locking nut. And the thing that is odd about this guitar is, look at this. Not only do you have a locking nut on there, but you also have which uh, appears to be a graphite nut underneath of it. We got over here the, uh, um, the Explorer headstock. And as you can see, it says Epiphone. It says Gibson down here. It's a Gibson Epiphone. And... Um, it's a super strat. Got the Sam Samic pickups here. And I will tell you, I had a hard time finding any sort of information on this guitar online. That's something that we'll talk about. We also got the five way selector switch. So you got the whole super strat option. Um, I, when I was playing with, with this right when I first got it, I had a nice little quack to it. And all that stuff. So that's one of the things that is great about it because I've been trying to find something good and stable that has that nice quacky blue sound. And this thing does that amazingly. So it is much different from my other Super Strat with the Floyd Rose, which is my EVH Wolfgang, which is not HSS. You know, for those who don't know, it's humbucker, single coil, single coil. It's just HH, you know, humbucker, humbucker don't have the middle pickup in there that gives it the uh, the quack sound and all that stuff but this one does okay and so this is a uh, this is a much different guitar than uh, any of my others now let me go ahead and tell you about how I acquired this 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 guitar I didn't even try and acquire this guitar to be perfectly honest okay here's what ended up happening for those of you who don't know um, me being a Jewish rabbi I do not do. Uh, Christmas, but Amy and her family do, and of course, you know, I have to, I, you know, love to be supportive of everything that she's into and everything that it is that she does, and so I ended up going, and they had this uh, Secret Santa thing going on, and um, her uncle, uh, Ron, apparently, he, he, he wanted to get my name and all that stuff. Now, I really feel bad about this because um, he really wanted to get my name from what I understand. And I, I was like, okay, I ended up going and getting a, like, uh, a $30 Roku <laughs> to give him and all that stuff because I ended up getting his name. And, uh, so I ended up going and giving him, giving him that. 
And so, 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 so we get done, and I'm not even thinking about anything. And he goes and stands up and says, you know, everybody else has gotten their stuff and all that stuff. And he says, he says, I want to present this to to Christopher. And then um, over here to the side, I got a Gator case that this came in, a really nice hard shell case. And he, you know, Ron's a bit of a joker. So I was like, you know, okay, th th this is a joke. There's some sort of joke tied in here. Because I knew that was a guitar case. And he goes and walks it on over to me, and I open it up, and this thing was in there. And I was shocked. I was, I was blown away. And I said, I have never seen this model of guitar. I, I am not familiar with this Epiphone. I, I did not even know that Epiphone did a Super Strat. I didn't know Epiphone did one with a Floyd Rose. I didn't know there was one with an HSS. And also that, you know, that it had this kind of Strat cut to it and all that stuff. So that kind of, you know, helped me to pinpoint when this was made, especially considering, you know, you could tell it's not the modern because of the fact the modern ones do it a much different way. And there was a little bit of dust on it and all that stuff. So I knew it had been sitting for a little while. And so basically, um, as Amy and I are leaving, I get in the car, she's driving, and I said, I, I need to find out what kind of guitar this is because I'm I've never seen this before. I've never seen this Epiphone before, never seen it. And so I went and I, um, it took me probably a couple hours. To come across a picture, there were several different series of Epiphone guitars uh, during this time and during the time that this one was made. And, and, and I didn't even know that the Samick logo was just an eye, so I was like, I'm not even sure what kind of pickups those are. I said, so I, so I would go into Google search and I said, what, what pickup has an eye as their logo? You know, and I wasn't able to find anything. And so I came across this Epiphone website that had all of the various Epiphone lines, okay? And I came across the S series, and I was like, that looks very similar. But they didn't have the S series in this color, and there was also a difference in the Floyd Rose that was within it. And plus, it had the Mother of Pearl inlays as opposed to the dots. So I was like, that's not it. That's not it. So um, I went down the list, and I found the Epiphone I-Series, okay? And now the I-Series, everything look exactly the same, except for, of course, the fine tuners being in this. So um, I ended up going and finding that and all that stuff, and it was very interesting because I then tried to – because they only had one picture. You can only find one picture of this guitar online. There is not a single video of one of these on YouTube, as a matter of fact. And so, you know, I, I ended up going and saying, okay, you know, is there any other place that, you know, has a picture of these? Because I wanted to go and look at everything else on it and all that, and all that stuff to see what had been changed, what had been modified and all that stuff. And... Of course, it was the I-Series, and I wasn't able to find anything else on it. But I was able to find that this guitar was only made for two years. Now, it was made in a two-year time period when the Super Strat was kind of on its way out, as a matter of fact. Epiphone really did not time this correctly, okay? Because if this had been created during the days of you know white snake and a poison and all that stuff then this would have been the end guitar because this right here would have been you know something that you probably see phil collin from def leopard playing it might be something you see cc deville playing because the fact that the super strat you know you want to get that uh with 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 the clean tones you want the three pickups for that especially when you're using a lot of chorus and all that stuff you want that sound and the super strat with the floyd rose was something that was huge 
at that time. You know, go and look at any bands during that time period. You know, a lot of them were playing something like this from companies like Jackson or Charvel or Kramer or many of those. And oddly enough, Gibson not only owns Epiphone, but they also own Kramer now as well, which is pretty funny. And they, when we went to the Gibson garage uh, during last summer, you know, we actually got to see some of the Kramers over there that they that they had. But you know, a majority of them were just like single humbucker in the bridge, and it's like ah, I, I like a little bit more variety there. And so, according to the description, what we had in here are Samick pickups. Now, Samick, I, I've been familiar with their guitars because I um, one of my first guitars, I think it was probably my fourth, was a acoustic 12-string made by Samick. And Samick makes a bunch of stuff overseas, you know, over in Indonesia, I believe it is. And it's in the same factory that makes not only Epiphone, but Court and uh, the PRS SE line and all that stuff. So, you know, a lot of this stuff comes out of the same place that made like your PRS SE standard or something like that. Um, so that, that, was, that was really interesting. As soon as I plugged this in, I said to myself, I gotta see if we got some blues tones here. I'll see if I get that blues quack and all that stuff. And it, it, it performed great with that blues quack and that'll be something that you'll hear me play on this guitar um, in later videos because again you know I just put new strings on it after installing the Floyd Rose and all that stuff and it is not in the greatest tune see as you can hear there so you know I, I'm not gonna play something that just make your ears want to bleed uh, <laughs> but um, yeah we'll be we'll be doing that very very soon and so you know during that time you know, this two-year period when this was released, there was another kind of music that was kind of doing away with those who were playing Les Pauls, those who were playing Jacksons, those who were playing Super Strats. In fact, the only guy still real playing, really playing a Les Paul in the rock world at the time was the guy that is famous with that guitar back there, the Appetite for Destruction, Les Paul. Eddie Van Halen was still around, you know, and he had the whole deal with Ernie Ball going on at that time. Then later Peavy, and then uh, that one over there is the Fender version of the Wolfgang. And so these right here were on their way up because everybody was going to, you know, uh, squ uh, you know, people starting out were getting Squire, you know, Telecasters or Stri Squire. Stratocasters because they had seen Kurt Cobain and those in the grunge world going and playing not super strats but those um uh those um things like a, a Stratocaster or something like that you know I never thought to myself that you would see a Stratocaster so prominently used in the rock world and kind of doing away with, say, the Super Strat. This has a very much an aesthetic of that time, you know, especially the color and all that stuff. I got to say, I love these knobs on this guitar. I love these knobs because one of the things I don't like about my EVH, as a matter of fact, is that uh, with that one, those knobs are kind of you know bumpy all the way around. And all that stuff, it's not very sleek, you know, whenever it is you want to adjust the volumes and all that stuff. Uh, this one over here makes it very easy. Five-way selector, again, you know, five different positions. Absolutely love that. I'm sure I'm going to love uh, whenever I get this thing totally uh, rightly in tune, uh, you know, for, you know, for good. <laughs> While this set of strings is on there, this is always something I deal with each and every single time that um whenever it comes to restringing a, a, a guitar with a with, with, with a with a floyd rose after it gets that to that point it's great because i can pull it off you know the uh the stand after you know four or five months and it's still in tune you know and that's the great thing about it especially with the dive bombs and all that stuff you know it uh, they stay in tune you know a really great thing 
But um, in terms of the wood of this, it's a, it is it is definitely heavier than a particular Strat, and I like heavy. I like heavy. Okay, uh, that's why I love my Les Paul. You know, it's because of how heavy it is. In terms of the wood that is used within it, I have no clue. Um, it is probably ash would be my guess. Uh, we got the rosewood fing fingerboard here, which I don't believe is Paul Thero. And um, looks like we got – and we got a scarf joint up over here if you guys can see it as well. And that appears that it might be maple, I'm guessing. Now, this thing has held up for many, many years. You know, I was a little bit unsure at first, you know, because it was a little a little dusty. I put went and I put some uh, – um, some lemon oil on the fretboard over here, and this thing plays and moves like a dream, especially with that neck profile, as you can see there. Very thin neck profile, which I absolutely love, but I actually like the width of the neck, as well as you guys know, I'm a very wide neck kind of guy. That's one of the things I don't like about my EVH Wolfgang. I love the roasted maple. But however, you know, it's the it's the skinny neck that I don't care for on, on this. This actually might end up being my go-to super strat, in all honesty. Um, this is a very interesting guitar that nobody talks about um, because it wasn't around for very long. It was not around very long, only in production for about two years. And this right over here, I, I definitely have to say... Um, could definitely rival a Jackson or a Charvel, as a matter of fact. Epiphone did a great job with this when it was at a time when Epiphone was not taken as seriously as they are today. Uh, so, you know, f finally, to just wrap it up, I want to say thank you to Ronnie for, uh, for giving me this. And uh, I just want to say I'm sorry that... Uh, took me so long to uh, go and do a video on it and all that stuff. I wanted to wait till the uh, the new Floyd Rose came in so it's all properly set up and all that stuff. And um, yeah, you know, it took a little while for that for that to come in. I didn't realize it was shipping from China and all that stuff. But uh, yeah, we got it up and running and all that good stuff. Now it's just going to be the waiting period as the string stretch and all that good stuff. But um, been very impressed with this guitar. Very impressed. All right, the Epiphone I-Series, all right? Um, let me know if you're able to find one online anywhere because I have not been able to find any of these anywhere. And it's put together amazingly well, definitely better than my first electric guitar, which was the Ibanez RX series, all right? Shalom, brocha. Thank you for joining me here today. Peace and a blessing. Shalom.